Hi friends, the latest restriction relaxation feels like fresh air for us who have been staying home for more than one month now. Though we might still need to wait for a while longer until we can worship together at Kingsbury. In the meantime, let me remind you to keep uh, practicing your spiritual checkup. In my last video about how to stay spiritually healthy in this self-isolation, I address some questions to assess our faith in this unusual time. Mainly, it talks about the inward focus inquiry. Now, I want to share some questions still from the same book of Donald Whitney, which has an outward projection. Several questions that we can ask to ourselves. Do you have a growing concern for the spiritual and temporal needs of others? Are you more loving? Are you a quick forgiver? Do you still grieve over sin? I'll leave the questions in the video description below for you to ponder upon it closer. But now let's take a moment and examine these uh, questions. Surely we can see how these questions are relevant only if we are rooted or belong into a community. Since a person is like a mixed tent or a multi side diamond, different interaction with different people will pull out different aspects of us, says Larry Crabb. And if we read Ephesians 4, 15 and 16, by speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. In him, we as the body are joined and held together by every supporting ligament. We grow and build itself in love as each part does it, its work. I repeat again for emphasis, as each part does its work. So by reading this verse, we will surely realize that sanctification is a journey that involves not only an individual in isolation, but the participation of entire community of God's people in order to grow into Christ's likeness. It does make sense, doesn't it? How can we grow in love and care if we don't see, if we don't feel the needs of others, either spiritual needs or temporal needs? How can we become a forgiving people without interaction, without being wrong by people, or we do wrong to other people? Without this interaction, we can't practice to be a more quicker forgiver. How can we grieve over sin that is exercised? trampling the weak and marginalized if we live in a comfort zone untouched by the suffering of the world. Our role model, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, showed the noblest example by willing to live in the perfect heaven and took on human flesh to live in this imperfect and broken world. He did this for you and me, for our sanctification. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, moreover, Paul said that Christ has not only brought, brought about our sanctification, he is our sanctification. John Calvin has put it well. He said, as long as Christ remains outside of us, we are separated from him. And thus, all that he has suffered and done for the salvation of the human race, remains useless and of no value for us. Therefore, abide in him. Follow his footsteps. Champion him in our lives. I hope now you can differentiate that our concept of sanctification is unique. It's, it's different from the picture of a hermit who hides himself in a shallow cave far from society. We need other people. So let's reflect on these questions. 
get out of our comfort zone and seek out what we can do to nurture our growth in the midst of our social circle. Are we growing in concern for our friends, our peers, for their spiritual needs of savior, or for their physical temporal needs? Are we more loving compared to last year? Are we a quick forgiver? Do we still grieve over sin? Once we start our journey by abiding in Him, uh, within the context of godly people who encourage, uh, forgive, and pray for each other, we will also notice that the progress is not as quick as we are expecting. Sometimes it can even frustrate ourselves when we see our own slow growth or when we help other people accompany people in one-on-one -on -one relationships and we see our friends uh, keep failing in the same struggle. Within this challenge of slow growth, R.C. Sproul said that there is indeed no quick method, no easy path to attain spiritual maturity. If we want to seek the kingdom of God, we need to abandon any formula that promises spiritual satisfaction instantly. And yes, that includes technology. Not even technology can help our spiritual growth. Let, let me elaborate this. As we live surrounded by technology in almost every detail of day-to-day -day affairs, there's something we need to remember. Technology might help us to experience pain relief quickly with medicine, finding our way to restaurants easily with our smartphones, and get an answer briefly to our questions, questions online. If technology can relieve our illness and make our job easier, we might be tempted to think that technology should be able to boost to beat up our spirituality, right? Sadly, but there is no, no shortcut, no quick answer, no effortless way. Sanctification requires diligent effort of God's means that he has given. The process is slow and almost invisible, but like the parable of a seed that that is being sold, the growth is certain. If we abide in Him, surrounded by people, like-minded people who love God and love others. Pablo Casals was considered the greatest cellist to live. When he was 95 years old, he was asked why he continued to practice six hours a day. He answered, because I think I'm making progress. Friends, each of us is in the journey of sanctification. Our life settings might change, but no matter what happens in this world, we are as responsible then and now to do what we can to cultivate our spirituality. If we keep on practicing spiritual disciplines and according to today's theme, the outward focus of spiritual disciplines. We will keep on making spiritual progress, which is shown through our love for God and for others. So, keep growing, keep your hygiene, keep safe, until we meet again. Bye.